hello everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review for 90 Day Fiance. The Other Way. Season 1, Episode 11. Okay. If you have not done so, please take a moment to one like this video. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Um, also, do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Excuse me. And become a whole J-Bird. 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 Da, 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 da. It's 3 o'clock in the morning, y'all. I can't. I can't. <laughs> I told y'all. I feel like my dad. Like, why is she always singing about some damn birds? Okay. So, I try not to kind of be that loud talking or whatever with the little screaming. Anyway. Um, so, yeah. Like. Comment, subscribe, share this video. Check the description box for all stuff you need to know and all the good shit. So first up, we have Ronald and Tiffany. Uh, is it Ronald and Tiffany? Yeah, Ronald and Tiffany. So y'all know, you know, she's from Maryland. He's in, from South Africa. They're in South Africa. And he was on his way to pick up her father from the airport, no, from his casino hotel. And she's concerned that he is going to relapse. He's going to be in the hotel, spending all the money, you know, I don't know, just relapse, relapsing all up through the damn casino. And I'm my like, girl, she, I'm so nervous. I just, what if something happens? I'm like, he, even if he gambles, it's not like he had to suck and ping ping for like chips. I might like, just calm down. He just gets calm down. Like give give him the chance to not mess up. Don't go into it feeling like if you allow him and allow was a crazy word. If you allow him to go somewhere that has a casino, he gonna just mess up. Don't do that because that could put more pressure on him to mess up. Truth be told, like don't even bring it up. Like you know he's supposed to gamble. You know what I'm saying it's a different. There's other ways to handle it by like telling him like no you can't do this and call me every single second I'm like girl calm down anyway he gets her dad nothing happens while she was just so so stressed oh what's gonna happen oh my god I have a bad feeling no you don't you gotta poop that's it you don't have a bad feeling anyway you know oh, I feel like if you're gonna stress this much about not trusting that he won't mess up you should not be marrying him I would not marry anyone where the day, this, this is the day of their wedding. The day of their wedding. I would not marry anyone who on the day of my wedding, I'm concerned if they're going to relapse and start gambling and burgling and, and, and pawn and refrigerators again. And, you know, I'm going to be destitute in South Africa with my son. It's just seemed too much. Anyway, you know, she, he, oh, it worked out, but he has a lot more to prove. Then why are you marrying him? If he has so much to prove why marry him i'm not marrying anyone who has not girl i just can't i i cannot <laughs> emma tyson hernandez voice or whatever so we see they they get all dressed up we see she's getting dressed in her wedding dress we see he's getting dressed in his tux her son looked adorably cute okay adorably adorably cute or whatever and so um they get married you know he cried as she walked down the aisle I could not get a good, um, I did have to get a good look for a dress. So, at the altar, okay, let me put the whole picture up. At the altar, they were very loving, okay. You know, the, as loving as two strangers could be at their wedding. You know, who, you know, with him just getting out of rehab a week ago, he was in there, you know, just for six months or whatnot. So, again, they look very happy. Her dress is beautiful. Look at beautiful. Her father did walk her down the aisle. Her son was the ring bearer. He had all the rings and stuff for them. And as you can see, you know, it was happy. He looked nice in his suit. She looked great in her dress. It was a whole, she had a whole wedding in South Africa. And the son said, you know, I've been waiting forever for them to get married. And now, I, you know, it's going to be stressful having two parents. I said, that's cute. You know what I'm saying? Um, his mom said how she can't believe how much has happened to her son and how much he's changed just in the six months since he went to jail for pawning her refrigerator and gambling and burglaring around in, in, in the neighborhoods. And he just made a whole complete 360. I mean... We shall see. It's still early on in thing. I'm like, girl, we can't be acting like we seen him, you know, since scratching and surviving. Good times. Hanging in a jawline. We ain't seen that yet at all. But we shall see. 
Um, now they married now, but they don't know where they're going to live. If it's going to be in South Africa, if it's going to be in the States, they don't know because they don't know if he will be allowed to come here based on his crimes. I don't know if, well, burglary and stealing, I don't know if they, I don't know. So we shall see. But of course we know they, she was pregnant and had their daughter. So, you know, maybe they're going to be on happy ever after later on. Who knows? But, you know, they are now a whole married couple. So, you know, she said, was she the first one to get married? I don't know. But she was a lovely bride. Okay. He was a lovely husband. Let's hope that it all works out. Next up, we have Aladdin and, and Laura. Um, that's our mother and son hugs. Anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Um, she's been there for two whole days. Okay, she's been there for two whole days, and 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 they're still fighting about the vibrator, uh, mainly because you know what I'm saying. She don't get why he was so upset about it because it's just a vibrator, and I'm like because that's it's, you you you're in a different place. You know, she keeps thinking about things of how we have things here in America, and I'm like. You're in Qatar. It's just, it's just different there. Like, don't you know, Shay, like, you know, I, I don't get it. You know, and I get, I, I, I feel like he would not have acted so upset had she not um, brought it up on camera. I think because you brought it up on camera, put out a deal, you put, you put out a whole vibrator on camera. I feel like you should just left that to the private conversation, okay? Um, because you already told him that he didn't have really do it for you sexually so i'm like he already know that but to then but like i feel like when he watched this show back he's going to divorce her <laughs> you embarrass me or he gonna get my wives one other two anyway she brings up how you know i think we should be free here to discuss sex without him getting mad again do you know where you are okay that means time for me to go to bed but i can't I have one more review to do after this one but i'm gonna say i'm going to bed but i'm not um, anyway, but again, she keeps talking like, oh, why can't we just, because you're not in America, my dear. It's just, it's just, it is what it is. I don't know what else to tell you. Anyway, um, Alvin takes her shopping. He wants to get her some traditional garb, um, there so that when she's walking around, you know, she can look like everyone else looks. And, you know, he brings up also for Ramadan, you know, she would need clothes for that time because they, you know, that's just, it is you're in another country, you know, so he's going to adhere to the rules and the religions of what he follows. And I feel like if she moves there, then you would have to do the same. It's that you can't, you can't move there and they want to ignore their customs and their traditions because they were like, we, you should just do it. You, you went there for a reason. Okay. I'm just going to say that. Anyway, he brings up how, um, you know, again, when you leave the house, I want you to look like the other women look, um, just so that you can kind of blend in and everything. And she says, you know, for her, it's scary for someone to tell her what she has to wear. Then why did you go there? That's common knowledge. Are you stupid, Laura? Are you stupid? I don't think you're stupid. I mean, gullible a little bit but not stupid but you you knew where you went you didn't google nothing this girl just pure stupidity you know she sh he's so he's like okay maybe this clothes maybe that she said looking at this clothes makes her feel fat i'm looking like why people don't realize when you put on big big clothes it doesn't make you look fat it kind of does give you a shape whereas when you wear fitting clothes even whatever your shape is you just look your shape but i'm like i feel like i i feel fat in that stuff i was like you should feel spacious in this okay anyway you know she then says asking the women to cover up is complete bullshit i say do you know where you are do you know where you went to do you know where you're going to do you know the things that he is telling you okay do you not know lord Mary and Joseph, God. Anyway, and I'm like, you moved to a country where that's like the law. It's not even like suggested. It's like, no, this is what it has to be. And if people want to, they can like arrest you for, for nothing. And you don't want to just put a girl, put on a little moo moo and move on. Okay? Because you think I look fat. No, you don't. And it's not even, it's traditional. And I forgot the name of what it was. But I'm like, you went. I don't get how people go then they don't think about, but I'm like, whatever. So we then, she also brings up how, um, 
this seems to be the way he's trying to make me be subservient to him and I, you know, that's not going to fly with me again, then why did you get with a man when that's their culture? That's their culture. You can't, you just can't do that. You can't, you can't get with someone and then want to completely ignore their culture, their religion, their traditions, um, their practices. You can't, you can't, you can't do that. You just can't because it it will cause conflict and it will make you seem ignorant. I'm just going to say that right now. Anyway, we see that Aladdin says his boss wants to meet her and they did, you know, he, she did meet the boss. Um, he has a, I guess he's rich. Um, he owns the, the, the workout studio that, um, Aladdin works at. So that's his boss. I tried to get a full body picture, but I was like, it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, that's the boss. I tried to move the wrong damn thing. Um, I was like, where did Jelly go? Her whole face just moved. No. So... That's the boss. And, you know, he had, like, a nice little piece of land or whatever. It had some expensive, like, was it ostriches? Ostriches? Or something or whatever that cost a whole bunch of money in America money. Um, anyway, so he advised her on the way to the to the boss's house. Like, look, most men here don't shake the women's hands. So if he doesn't put his hand out to shake your hand, like, don't. Don't initiate like you know he has to initiate a handshake like he's like some do but some don't. If and again if he just if he doesn't shake your hand like you know it's fine to just say hello. And I'm like okay, so he's trying to like kind of just hip her to you know all the little quirky things that she would have to kind of just kind of get used to whatever. But she gets there and he shakes her hand so it's fine. And they sit around chit chat for a little bit. He showed him the birds and the animals he had around his 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 his, his land. Okay. And, you know, he brings up, you know, a man here can have four, up to four wives. <laughs> what? Really? I didn't know that. How did you not know that? It's the pure ignorance of wanting to go to a country and not look into anything that is typical there. <clears throat> I feel like to act like you don't know that is kind of crazy. Ooh, <coughs> my mouth was dry. Too many reviews, not enough water. Anyway, so the boss said, like, well, how are you liking, you know, being here, like, the tra- the, just the tradition of it all. I'm, you know, learning everything or whatever. I'm just learning that. And that's me right up how, you know, a man can have for a wife. And she said, well, he didn't mention that to me. How does that work? He said, oh, well, he just kind of, he can get more wives. Sometimes the first wife picks the additional wives. Sometimes the, this first wife has no idea he has more wives and it's legal. Like, he can't get in any trouble. He can have up to four. And I, I had no, he did not tell me any of this. You didn't Google it? I feel like if you Google wives in certain countries, somewhere in the fine print, okay, somewhere it says if that country allowed that man to have more than, to have multiple wives, I think she just is playing dumb, dumb, diddy, and don't know what to do it by herself. And I'm like, girl, you cannot be that special. Anyway, um, the boss said, you know, I like you. I think y'all good for each other. I think y'all make a good couple, and y'all are free to come back and visit me at any time. I think he just wanted his estate to be on TV, and that's why he invited him over, but it was what it was. Um, David and Jihoon was really, really easy. Um, I'm going to leave that picture up the whole time so I can... Uh, look at the screen tiredly and not have to look up. So, because I'm a little bit asleep in my head. So, Devin and Ji Hoon was talking via via a video message. She video messages him because she came home from a doctor's visit. Now, the doctor told her that her blood pressure is up really, really high. That can make the baby's blood pressure go up or whatever. And she can stroke out. The baby can stroke out. Anybody can stroke out at any moment. Okay? And so, they want to do, take the baby soon. They want to you know, push up her, I guess, C-section to where, you know, they take the baby because, again, her breath pressure is too, too, too high. So, at first, Jihoon did not even understand what she was saying too much. There's some of the words she didn't get. So, she had to text him what she was saying, you know, so he can hear it in his own language. And then he's like, blow breath pressure? Are you okay? She's like, yeah, but you know, they, they have to take the baby. It's going to be early. So she's really calling him to ask him if he can move up his flight. Because Jihoon has already purchased his flight 
to come to the States. And, you know, she's like, because I have to have the baby sooner, can you push it up to come be here for the baby to be born? And he's like, oh, you know, I don't, it's just very expensive, you know. And he brings up how his flight is like, his ticket was like non-refundable. And so he can't, if he was to change his flight, he would lose out on, like he would lose that money and would have to, you know, spend whatever else, this extra money. So he's like, you know what, you're going to just have to, I can't change my ticket. You know, you're going to have to just have the baby on your own without me being there. Which made her mad, but I'm not, you can't be mad. Like, I don't think he has, I really don't think he has the money to do it. I, and I think that has to be a realistic um, situation to where you're not feeling like, oh, well, he'll just come here and it'll be fine. It's like, well, no, he gets a lot to change tickets at the last because she wants, needs him to come in like a couple days. And so, again, he's like, you know, I just need you to have the baby on your own and I'll be there as soon as I can. And she brings up how, you know what I'm saying, I told him to not buy his ticket sooner, you know, when he did or whatever because I had a baby, I could I could have had the baby sooner, but he booked it anyway. And, you know what I'm saying, I'm questioning his commitment. You can't question that man's commitment because you did not long, you did not know him long enough to know who he was to question. And I get that you're now seven, eight months pregnant. Oh, I've known him for seven, eight months, but when you got pregnant, you had no idea who he was as a person, okay? And so we just know that she's going to have a baby soon, and we hope that ji Hoon, you know, gets it together. Um, Next up, we have Paul and Karini. Paul and Karini, I don't know. You know, um... They go looking at rental houses, basically, because they need someone to stay because he does not want to keep staying with her. These pictures being up is, like, helping me close my eyes and sleep a little bit while I'm still talking. So, this is what y'all know. As I'm talking, my eyes are closed. I'm halfway asleep. Anyway, so, <laughs> Paul and Karini are looking at houses because, you know, they need to live somewhere else besides her parents' house if he's going to be there or if she's going to be there in, in the long haul. So, they go see two uh, places with this little realtor. And the funny part was, I kept saying to myself, is the realtor wearing a bulletproof vest? But I think it was just his t <laughs> He had his wife beater t-shirt um, outside of his regular one. I'm like, well, that's not how we do it here. Anyway, so the first house they go see is a nice house. It's spacious. You know, he like, oh, yeah, the kitchen is large. The air works really well. It's very, very nice. It has no bugs. Okay. Um, it's a, a nice, nice apartment or whatever, you know, and it costs $4,500 in their money, which was eleven eleven seventy in our money. And Paul looked like, oh, okay. And Karini felt like the house was too big and it was too expensive. And I'm like, she wanted a smaller, cheaper house? Okay. You know, that's the first. Anyway, they take her to, they take them to the second house. It was smaller, less expensive. It was like a fancy shack. Um... To where, you know, the air didn't really work that much. It was bugs there. Um, everything was smaller, basically. You know, there was a huge backyard, but I thought the backyard used tons of work because it was just a lot of grass growing extra tall or whatever. And so, this place only costs $1,000 in their money, and that is $260 in America. I'm looking like, 260 bruh. If my if I could live somewhere for two sixty, I would be a millionaire in a year because I would have so much extra money to make money off of. I'm just saying. Anyway, you know, Paul does not like the second one because again, he doesn't like that it has bugs. He doesn't like that you know it's smaller, and he doesn't like that it doesn't have working air conditioning or whatever. Um, even though it's affordable, and Karini doesn't like the bigger place because it's too big and it's too and it's too expensive. So they both are like, I don't. They both of them don't want to live in the other place. Even though Karini would want to live in the other one, she like they can't afford it because like if you can't be here, how would I afford it? Like I I can't. We can't do that. You know, we just can't. I was like, girl. The second place wasn't horrible. It was just okay. But I'm like, look what they at. You know what I'm saying? They so far into the, the girl. I'm like, you can't expect, you know what I'm saying, the nicest of the nice. I do think the first place they looked at was really, it was really comfortable. It was just expensive for them. I, I agree with Creamy. We don't have no money. For it, okay, we cannot do that. But Paul, like you know, what I'm saying, I'm not, I'm not staying in that second one. I'm just ain't gonna do it. And I say, mm, 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 just team too much. Um, we then see because 
he said he does not want to stay in the, 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 the cheaper one. He would prefer the more expensive one. You know, <laughs> she's upset and he's upset too. Um, He's like, I'm not staying here. Fine, Paul. Fine. Go back to America. I'm like, why did she keep telling that man to go back to America? We don't want him. He can sit there with you. You, that's your man now. You, you keep him, okay? Don't let him free. Anyway, <laughs> they then go back, go back to the, her parents' house or whatever. And, you know, we see they're kind of so they ask about the whole situation. The mom then brings up how, you know, she think it was rude for him to ask Karini for a DNA test. I'm like, well, which time? So, you know, she's like, so what's this about, like, a DNA test? And so when Karini kind of translates it to what her mom said to Paul, um, he says how, well, the reason I'm talking about a DNA test is because with me wanting to, um, he wants to be there, but it would also be because of the baby. So he said, I, I thought the embassy is going to ask for a DNA test to prove the kid is mine to have me stay here. So, like, if they ask for it, like, we're going to have to have it done. And she said, well, what if they don't ask for it? He thought, if they don't ask for it, we don't have to have it done. And I'm like, mm, mm, mm. So, he had her phone. He had Queenie's phone for some reason or not. And I can't remember why. But as, oh, because they were using the, the translation app. And a message popped up on the phone for her from some American dude who was someone who speaks English. And he was upset. Okay, who was who was that? Like, why are you having these private conversations? You're not kind of crazy for you to be doing that. Like, why would you even, you know, be talking to somebody else in English? She says it's the son of a lady who helps her. And they're more like brother and sister. Well, if that's true, then why hasn't your brother met your husband? Anyway, so at this point in time, you know, she's like, it's not romantic. He's like, my brother is not even like that or whatnot. He's like, oh, so I can go and speak to the women, you know, in your country and you'll be fine with that? She's like, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I think she didn't think that through. <laughs> I don't think she thought he would come back and say like, oh, so I can talk to other women here too? I don't think she thought he was going to say that, but he did. Um, You know, he says he just doesn't appreciate her talking to other people there, and he thinks he thinks it's rude. And she gets up and says, you know what, just stop, okay? Fuck you. And then she walks away. I said, Kareem, what are you doing, Kareem? Is you guilty by association? Let us know, let us know, let us know. But I feel like Karini can't be upset. Paul had every reason to be upset because, one, you're my wife. And you should not be having side conversations with side strangers who I don't know. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, and last but not least, these two here. Corey and Evelyn. Um, And that's a they little... Look, T right behind them, you know, I'm like, girl, all them dead-ass pine tree leaves, get some greenery up in there. Anyway, Corey has been there at this point in time for a month, okay? And he says how he how he has been trying to interact more with the locals to show, the Evelyn, to, with, to show Evelyn that he really wants to be here. And so as he's walking back to the, um their bar or whatever, someone calls out a name and it's her ex-boyfriend's name and they're calling him by the ex's name. And he's like, no, my name is Corey, okay, not so-and-so, you know. That was her ex-ex-boyfriend, like, I'm Corey, I'm here now, like, you know, my name is Corey. And he, you can tell he was a little bit agitated. So, you know, he brings a pop and come here for four years off and on. It's like, how, oh, excuse me, how can they not know who I am? Because they don't. <laughs> they don't, and I was, I'm like, oh, so does her ex look like Corey, and they just keep calling him that, or, you know, I, I didn't get the point of them calling Corey someone else's name, anyway, when he goes to talk to Evelyn back, up, back at the bar, you know, and she, he brings it up or whatnot, she said, well, you know, they love my, my ex, or whatever, he was always around with the people, so, like, he intertwined with them, he, she said, so, for them, you are just another white guy, um, so they don't know your name in our language or whatever. Like he like she, she said she said your name there is we don't even have a word in our language that is your name. So when they see you, they really just think, Oh, that's the white guy and the white guy name is whatever the name is. Um, and then he like, Well, I don't like it or whatever. I think it's kinda crazy. Um and then she's like, well, I, I wish you would stop bringing this up. And he said, well, you know, I can because of what happened last year. I said, what happened last year? So apparently they were on a bit of a break or not because he said 
a year ago she cheated. She said they was on a break or whatever, and she did some things. And I'm like, either way, either way, you did some things, okay? And, you know, for that reason, he kind of doesn't like the fact that they called him the ex's name. Why? Because it was the ex that she was messing around with. Mm-mm-mm. Got to be more careful. Anyway, so, <laughs> um, what do you, where was, oh, so her and the ex are, like, still cool and friends or whatnot. He said, I wish that she would not even associate with them because he keeps saying how he is still in love with her and she just keeps, like, just being friends with him or whatever. So, she said, you know what, I need for us, if we're going to move forward, you have to stop bringing this up. You have to, you have to let this go. Let it go. If you want to be with me, let it go. And then he like, okay, fine, but only because he only has 60 days left to marry her. So for him, he doesn't want to cause any more ripples in the sand that will cause him to um, not, I guess, be with her. I think you like it. I love it. Anyway, and that's how the episode went off. So thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jenny's Corner. Peace.